Our next speaker is Christopher Weimer from the Washington Engineering Institute, and his talk is Using Game Mechanics to Increase Funding and Improve Public Knowledge. Mr. Weimer. Christopher Weimer, and for as long as I can remember, I've wanted to be an explorer, an adventurer. As a child, I would go back in time in search of dinosaurs. I would dive to the bottom of the ocean in search of strange sea creatures, and I would explore distant planets and alternate realities looking for new and exciting life forms and I'd usually make it home in time for dinner. Now, as an adult, I fulfilled this need for adventure in other ways. Books, video games, movies, but they never really give the same satisfaction as playing did as a child. As an adult, I have a stronger craving for my adventures to be real and to matter. Pretend is okay, but reality is where it's at. And that's what makes Icarus Interstellar so special. This adventure is real. This is yet another moment in history where science fiction is becoming science fact. And there are countless people out there right now just waiting to be a part of something like this. And there's a specific group of people that I think can be extra helpful. A group called gamers. But this group isn't as narrow as you may think. And there it has grown to incorporate a very large portion of the population. Nearly everyone in the world plays some kind of game every now and then. Whether you're spending 30 hours a week playing World of Warcraft or EVE Online, or you're spending several minutes a day playing Angry Birds or even a daily crossword on a bus ride to work, you're spending some portion of your time engaging in games. Recently, people have caught on to this fact and they've started to incorporate game elements into other non-game activities to make them more fun and engaging. This is commonly referred to as gamification. Now, game elements or mechanics can usually be traced back to three key things. Mastery, autonomy, and purpose. Mastery is the feeling you get as you progress and you get better and better at something. Autonomy is the want to choose our own way and to control the different aspects of our lives. And purpose is the desire to have our actions truly matter. M-A-P, or what I like to call the map. Because if you're not on the map, then you're lost. These three things are what produce long-term engagement. People motivated by these things tend to stay motivated for much longer. Which is why it's extremely important for Icarus Interstellar to utilize these motivators when engaging, when engaging with their supporters. So, Let's, apl let's apply them directly to Icarus Interstellar. Mastery. Enable people to improve and increase their support for Icarus Interstellar over time. Autonomy. Offer many options. Allow people to choose how to provide support for Icarus Interstellar. And purpose. Give people a reason to take action. Provide them with a sense of meaning. Inspire them to participate in Icarus Interstellar and to get their friends involved. Now, as I continue, I will highlight which areas of the map apply to my examples. Now, there are two main ways for the general public to contribute, crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. Crowdfunding is gaining small amounts of money from a large number of people, the exact opposite of traditional funding. It's not one big check, it's a lot of little ones. Crowdsourcing is obtaining services, ideas, or content through contributions from a large number of people. So, similar idea. Instead of a few people doing a lot of work, it's a lot of people each doing a little work. So, let's start with crowdfunding. Kickstarter and Rocket Hub are two great examples of this and are pretty well known. 
and Icarus Interstellar just ran a, success, a successful Kickstarter campaign to fund this event. In fact, they raised $5,000 more than their original goal. That's really cool. There's a couple key points that I want to make about crowdfunding in this way. Inspire your supporters. Remind them how profound this mission is, how rare it is, and how spectacular it is. Really drive this point home. Make them feel good about contributing to the cause, and let them know that their hard-earned money is going to good use. And make sure to offer lots of donation options, especially on the lower end. You should have at least as many options in the $1 to $100 range as you do in the $100 plus dollar range, maybe more. This is where a majority of people will be, don will be donating. And remember, there are a lot of people out there that are interested in contributing to projects like this, but they're not all going to be able to contribute $1,000 at a time. They're going to contribute five, ten, or twenty dollars at a time. And when they do donate, reward them. Make the rewards interesting, but also make sure that they reinforce your cause in some way. So things like merchandise, like t-shirts, hats, posters, educational pieces like books and DVDs, and recognition by listing names on sites or even on the project itself. These are common rewards that are easy to tie back into your cause. Kickstarter is growing fast, and it's being used more and more by big names and small names alike. Director Spike Lee uh, is, is running one of the most successful Kickstarters to date, and he has raised just over one, one and a quarter million dollars, and he still has several days to go on the campaign. A couple key things to note. He makes it widely available to donate by having 28 of 49 rewards at $100 or less. And his top, top rewards are very compelling, and they offer things like ultra-rare props from previous films, being able to visit Spike on set, and even sitting courtside with him in a Knicks game. Crowdfunding is becoming easier and more effective for companies to raise money. But where does it go from here? Well, I think projects like this will decide where it goes. Icarus Interstellar is unique in it. It has such an earth-shattering goal of building a starship but it also has an incredibly long and also short timeline of launching an interstellar mission by the year 2100. It's incredibly short with respect to all that needs to happen technologically, but it's also incredibly long from the perspective of the general public. Most of us function on very short time scales. We count the hours till lunch, we count the hours till we get off work, we count the days till the weekend, but rarely do we consider what our actions will mean 50 years from now, 100 years from now, or 200 years from now. And it's because of this that Icarus Interstellar faces a very unique challenge. How to keep people motivated and engaged, not just for today, and not just for this month, but for their entire lives, and for the lives of their children. It's this unique challenge that I think will influence how we do our crowdfunding. What a project like this needs is what I would call continuous crowdfunding. And what this means is that instead of having a deadline, the crowdfunding would be open-ended. And you'd keep track of people's donations and allow them, you keep track over time and allow them to level up and reach various reward levels over time. Some key points. The standard Kickstarter structure will be very useful here. This is everything I just mentioned. So a large number of affordable donation options <coughs> with rewards that tie back into the project, an inspiring cause, and so on. And let people see where their money is going. Or better yet, let them choose where their money is going. You can show a blueprint of a ship with various components labeled, and donors could then choose which section of the ship to donate to. And give as much feedback as possible. Let people know how things are progressing. Allowing people to watch and engage with development in this way really helps to build a, a connection with your supporters. Donor progression. Keeping track of the donations that people make and allowing them to level up over time. This is probably the most important aspect of continuous crowdfunding. So let's say, for example, that I get one point for every dollar that I donate. And let's say that I donate $10 every month. Over time, my donation points add up and at a later date, I can use them to access exclusive rewards that aren't otherwise available. So things like autographed items, 
or rare pieces of prototypes, or maybe even <coughs> meeting with members of the, design, of the design team. Family progression. And remember, it's not just about getting people to donate today. It's about getting them to donate and contribute over long periods of time. So in order to do this, we need to stop thinking about just individuals and start thinking about families and groups of people. Sadly, I will probably not get to fly on a starship, but perhaps my children can, or maybe their children. Perhaps my donation points can exceed my lifetime and be passed from person to person. Consider it a starship savings account. Perhaps these long-lasting donation points could eventually decide the privileged citizens that board our first colony ship. Long-term recognition. <coughs> Just as donors will pay to get their names in the credits of a Spike Lee movie, they'll pay to be acknowledged on this project. But unlike the short-term recognition offered in most Kickstarters, we could offer some very long-lasting credits. Imagine the Icarus Interstellar equivalent to the Voyager's golden record. Donors could list their names, or even decide what other material goes on the record. Or imagine other supporting projects. Let's say that we want to build a space elevator. We could inscribe names of top donors or top families of donors along the elevator, putting names every 10 feet or even every foot. You could put a lot of names on that elevator. Enabling and encouraging people to donate multiple times over time is incredibly important to a project like this with such a long duration. So we should constantly be looking for ways to embrace this longevity and use it to our advantage. Another example of crowdfunding is something called free rice. Free rice has two main goals. One, to provide free education, and two, to help end world hunger by donating rice to hungry people around the world. On the site, players can answer trivia questions on a number of subjects, and for each right answer, Free Rice donates 10 grains of rice <coughs> through the World Food Program. These donations are made possible by the sponsors that advertise on our site. The main driver behind people playing this game is that they, they want to donate rice to people who need food. Free Rice has raised just under 100 billion grains of rice, and they've fed millions of, of people around the world. So what would this look like for Icarus Interstellar? Well, we could have similar goals. Free education. It's not an official goal, but in my opinion, it would be a great bonus. And then, of course, to have a successful interstellar launch. We could have trivia or puzzle games where you can donate to interstellar travel simply by learning about interstellar travel. And as players play these games, sponsors on a site make small donations to the, pro to the project. Now, obviously, we're allowing players to choose a topic so that plays to autonomy. But what if we spice it up a little bit? What if all the points won in specific categories went to making donations in that field? For example, all the points I earn in a physics puzzle go to making donations in something physics related. Or they could even be as specific as answering questions about our sun or sunlight, raising donations for solar sails. It's not only important to have choices, but those choices should matter, and it should make a difference whether I choose A or B. <coughs> so a quick recap on crowdfunding. Offer lots of donation options, with the majority being in the lower, more affordable range. Offer cool and interesting rewards that tie back into your cause. Inspire your donors and remind them the importance of, this mi of the mission. Enable and encourage people to continually donate to your cause and reward them for doing so in addition to the normal rewards. And bring supporters into the loop and let them know how things are progressing. And let them know where their money is going. Or even better, let them choose where their money is going. Do you want to support the pulsed, the pulsed fusion propulsion engine or the rigging for the solar sails? So let's move on to crowdsourcing. Now remember, this is similar to crowdfunding, but instead of raising funds, you're collecting services, ideas, or content. The first example I want to go over is something called Zooniverse. And Zooniverse is really interesting. Zooniverse is created by the Citizen Science Alliance, and they're constantly creating new game-like projects that help scientists and researchers 
handle the flood of data that comes in from various experiments. Through these projects, players can help explore the ocean floor, study wind patterns on Mars, or even search for exoplanets. And Zooniverse has around a dozen or so projects like this going on at any given time. One of my favorite is called SETI Live. In this project, players examine radio frequency signals from the Allen Telescope Array. And like the other projects, the major benefit to SETI here is that they have players going through the data that can most benefit from human attention, as opposed to just computer power. In SETI's case, they have players going through the data with heavy human-made radio <coughs> frequency interference. Another cool aspect of SETI, of this, is that SETI uses live signals when available. And if enough players notice the same signal, SETI will actually reposition their telescope. Now, just like in free rice, players are partaking in these projects because they believe in the cause. And the fact that SETI will reposition the telescope if players see something worth looking at is compelling to those engaged in the program. It's encouraging to know because it makes my efforts feel more real. So let's apply some of these things to Icarus Interstellar. You could have similar projects that could help with fusion engine research, solar energy research, or even deciding which star to go to. <coughs> Anything that would benefit from having many eyes reviewing and categorizing. And just like how players can collectively move SETI's telescope, our players could have equally profound impact, perhaps helping to decide telescope targets or eventually uh, deciding the best source of propulsion. And it's not just about money. Players can contribute in many ways. These, allow, these projects allow people to donate something just as valuable as money, their time. And again, the, the people are out there. You might not have thought that you'd have people willing to listen to thousands of audio recordings of caves trying to identify bat calls, but Bat Detective is one of Zooniverse's regular projects. And Zooniverse has had almost one million people engage in their game-like projects. So let's invite these people in, and you'll be happy we did. Foldit and Philo are two more great examples of crowdsourcing. Foldit is a game about protein folding, and Philo is a game about DNA sequencing. Both games take complicated problems and turn them into puzzle games. Players then play through these puzzle games <coughs> and researchers can analyze the results of the games. And they're similar to the Zooniverse projects in that they use problems that can benefit from having human, human attention as opposed to just computer power. And they turn players into problem solvers. I'm sure there are many issues with interstellar travel right now that can be, tr that can be transformed into puzzle games. Maybe some of you can think of some examples right now. If we could turn these problems into puzzles able to be played by thousands of people, then we stand a much better chance at finding solutions. And it's not just puzzle games. There are endless possibilities to what we can create and how we can gain from it. A quick example of a bigger, more grandiose game would be what I'd call a Starship Builder. SimCity meets Kerbal Space Program. A city builder meets a rocket builder. In this game, players could design and create their own interstellar probes and starships. And they would have to take into account things like population, worker roles, ship structures, as well as fuel expenditure, propulsion types, and eventually uh, even resource collecting and distribution mid-journey. We could go from having one fully designed starship to having thousands. And apparently I went a lot faster than I thought I was going, so already wrapping up. Um, but to wrap up, this project represents a microcosm of Earth, both in development and even possibly as a, a colony ship in the distant future. And it'll take more than just physicists and engineers. We need a combined effort of all humankind. Games have the ability to provide funds and support for interstellar travel, as well as the ability to engage, entertain, and educate the public. And it's my opinion that the public can provide much more than the governments or private investors. 
I believe that the public can, can carry this project and it should be a priority to start creating these avenues of engagement. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Weimer, for that very informative talk. Uh, we're going to go.